All right. So in the last demo, I was able to finish up all the, the kind of white outlines and the text that's white outline shapes on top of the black. I might actually go back and curve that and a little bit. But I wanted to bring this um, kind of energy effect, for lack of a better term, this grouping from the live trace I made of this old introductory comic logo type called the elementals. And though I didn't like the kind of jaggedness on the letter forms themselves to go with my water illustration, I do like that this border that they've built as I've live traced it and kind of turned it into my own vectors, the kind of energy it has. It's a little electric and it's not as clean and just a straight banner like what I've created. So what I'm going to do is instead of using the small selection tool, which only got portions of it, I'm using the lasso to make sure I get every anchor point that makes this up. That can be really tricky. Doing my best, and then I can always delete from it if I get a little too much, like if I go into the black. All right, so I've got that all. I'm going to go over this. Ah. Redo, redo. Ah. <laughs> uh, so adding on to selections doesn't work the same way as. Uh, other actions in Illustrator. So I should probably copy these over as I get them. It's probably more... I know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to copy it, Command C, make a duplicate, lock it, turn it off, paste it in place, and then just delete from it. A lot easier to see what you're deleting than what you're adding to a selection. And that's where the lasso can come in handy too. So I don't have to, have to be quite so careful this time. There's always multiple ways you can do something in Illustrator and Photoshop in digital programs. So a lot of it's just problem solving. And I am always just learning so much trying to tackle new projects in new ways. So you, more than any other art discipline, I think, you can't be afraid to make mistakes. I certainly make plenty of them, as evidenced in these demos. The more you work on it, the more you can have, make kind of better decisions in your workflow the next time you have a similar problem. But luckily, all of these different projects, the problems tend to keep having a lot of variety. And that's why I never post just one video showing you the way to do something. Because it will change with every idea you have. So I do show you a way to do it, but by no means is it the best way. It's just the way I can figure out in the moment. But I enjoy that process, that kind of puzzle, puzzle solving. All right, so that is now the energy vector I want to kind of play with. So if I take it and just move it with the large selection tool, it allows me to make it larger, rotate it. I only really want that first part of it. And I have this idea that kind of connects to this and then kind of goes away. Let me 
again, why not? Just make a duplicate of it. Put it on a new layer. Might as well make it black. And then I'm going to get rid of this portion of it. Maybe this portion too. And then if I use my lasso and select around this, I can actually use the small selection tool and kind of warp the whole thing. It's not as good as the warp tool. certainly makes a difference. And then I can use my lasso and I can collapse this area in. So instead of just moving one anchor point, it kind of moves all of them a little bit. Okay, and then I can use my eraser. Let's see. Bite away at it. The eraser will only affect the layer that's not locked, or the group of layers that aren't locked. So that's handy. All right. That gives me something to play with. I don't know if I'll use it or not. Something from the original I thought I would try to modify and bring on. Again, playing and seeing. And what I love about organizing things on different layers is you can always just turn, turn them off and on before you save your EPS. I do like that little angry separation there. And I actually might want Steal a little bit from here. Or better yet, bring all our skills to bear. Just use the blob brush. Pretty small. and continue it. This is also what I can use to fill in gaps if I ever wanted to. I have these little jogs that are weird. The smooth tool can also help. and the pencil tool if needed. So the, all these different ways we've learned to, to work with vectors and help you with type design. Yeah. Pencil tool is still my favorite because you can just get right in there and cut a new, cut a new mark. Uh, that's why we have two overlapping paths here. So how can I use my skills there? Select them all. Use the pathfinder. Merge them together, and then you can redraw.
But again, we're not going for perfection. Just showing you how you have all the control you could ever want. All right, so angry elementals. That almost looks look like an Indiana Jones logo type or something. Impressive. I don't think I need anything underneath it. I think that contains it nicely. All right. Now, last little little bit to work on. This is all curved nicely, but this is perfectly straight. So that's a little annoying. Let's unlock that. Let's open that up, find out which group this is on right there. I think the and is just fine. I think what I want to play with instead are just these. And all I'm going to do is change them, change their anchor points to curves. Just a subtle curve. If I wanted a perfect 45 degree curve, I could. I want to kind of make it match its context and then walk it back at the edge. And then underneath, same thing. It's very subtle. And then walk back one handle so it's straight. I just need to go to the bottom. And this is a bit of a perfectionist, but it will make it better. And it gives it a little bit more of a hand done feel. Whoops. That's the whole thing. No, not that whole thing. Uh, lasso is necessary. Make sure I get those anchor points though. Okay, now I should be able to, yep, just move it ah, where I want it. Ah. The joys of Illustrator, I tell you. If I use the arrow keys, it gives me nice space. Then I should be able to select all of it again and move it. Let's up it a little bit. And I just need to make this curve a little shallower. And there we go. So that doesn't bug me anymore. All right, save it. Now there is white built into this design, but not a lot of it. Just the white on top of the black, because I want it to always be white. And then the, no, um, oh, but maybe I don't. And then the, the white around the letters, which I do want those to always be white. So let me show you what I mean. So what I'm going to do is select and unlock all the ones that are open. Hold down Shift and Command so they all move together. Even the empty one. Right. And then I can move it onto the gray. So that is what I have currently. Now, if I wanted to give myself even more options, because maybe that white's a little strong, I could take all